Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, this is the Fish Slayer, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin. Solo fish trip right there. Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Alright folks, on the boat with me today. I got my oldest of four children. The one and only fish slayer. Avi! Alright folks, we're rigging up and we're heading towards the inlet. It's starting out to be a beautiful morning. It's mid-morning. And on the agenda for today is we're going to take you over to Reef's Ledges. We're going to deploy a couple of different tactics and show you how to get into the hookup. Many desirable fish swim over to Reef's Ledges. We're going to show you how to target and locate these fish by going over ledges, structures, what speed to go at, what bait, and what tactics to use when going after them. Before we get into this stuff, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, like I said, it's mid-morning. We got no breeze. It's gonna be hot out. So we gotta hit up the reef early enough before the fish start going down deep, seeking shelter and shade. Great fishing weather, great fishing conditions, but our window of opportunity will close quickly. So you know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. All right, folks, so we've headed out of Boca Raton Inlet this morning. We're about maybe a half mile north of it. Currently sitting in right around 138, 140 feet of water. Like I said, we're gonna be trolling the ledges of the reefs, doing a couple of different tactics, hopefully showing you how to get into the bite. So the first tactic that we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called the standard South Florida trolling tactic. Basically covering the water column. We're gonna have out a planer line and we're gonna have out a top water line. What this does is this enables you to fish multiple layers of the water column, thus having you cover more ground at one time than if you were just, let's say, just up on top trolling one plane or only had a planer. So for our planer trolling setup, we're gonna have this. This is a Penn International 30 spooled with 80 pound braid. It is on a seven foot chaos rod, all roller guides. And for our topwater rig, we got this, Pen 12H. This is spooled with 20 pound monofilament. It's on a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. The lure that we're gonna be using on this is a white trolling feather, a two ounce trolling feather. And we got it hooked up to about 12 inches of number four 40 pound wire leader. And we got a swivelless connection right here. It's rigged with a double 5.0 J hook tandem setup. All right, so we're gonna rig up for our planer trolling first. What we've got is a 300 pound swivel. We've got a number six plant. Hook that swivel onto the ring that is on the arm of your planer. Then we've got our leader. The leader is 100 feet of 60 pound monofilament. On one end, the planer end, I have a 300 pound swivel. We hook that into the little eye that is on the plate of the planer. You have to do this properly, otherwise your planer will never set and you won't be fishing it correctly. So this is your main line, this is your leader. What happens is you're trolling, trolling, the fish hits, pulls your leader, trips your planer, comes up and you know you've got a fish on. And our lure for our planer trolling is gonna be also a white trolling feather, two ounce one. It's also rigged up with two 5.0 J hooks. And on the business end of our leader, we have a number seven swivel. And we're just gonna hook that through the eye that we've created on our leader. And again, this lure is on number four, 40 pound wire leader, about 16 to 18 inches of it. You wanna use wire leader when trolling the reef like this because toothy critters are everywhere. And the last thing we'll do for our planer trolling setup on the white feather is we're going to tip it with a bonita strip. You simply line up your bonita strip with your tandem hook set up. You're going to put your trailer hook in first from the meat side through the skin, and then you will put in your lead hook. Same thing. Puncture it down, good to go. All right, this is set up, ready to plop it in the water. Get pulling. All right, so we're gonna let out our planer first. Let out your planer, you simply dunk it in the water and you unravel all 100 feet of your leader from your yo-yo, all right? Once your yo-yo is done unraveling your leader, you're going to dunk your planer in the water and put your reel in the free spool. Now 
you don't have to let out a bunch of main line on your planer reel because you've already got out a 100 foot leader. So you want to let out about 100, 125 feet of main line. So we're going to slow down. We're going to let our line go a little bit slack so that we activate our planer. Let our planer set. Let it start diving down towards that weight. All right. Let out enough line. Your planer's diving down. Put your boat in slow forward. There we go. You'll see your rod bend over like this in a parabolic fashion. That's how you know your planer is set. Put your click on. Tether your rod to your boat so it doesn't come over if you get a nasty recoil. And we're gonna turn into our reef. Okay, so we're up and trolling with the planer. We're heading in shallower over about 120 feet over the ledge of the second reef. So you can identify these ledges and stuff by looking at your fish finder and finding some basic structure, but you also want to look at your GPS and look at the contour lines. If you've got contour lines that are packed closely tight together, that means you're going over a ledge. There's an incline. If the contour lines are spread further apart, you've got more flat ground. We want to watch what's going on and uh, figure this out. That way we know we're actually fishing over structure because we are in essence fishing the reef. All right, so we're coming up on 100 feet. What we're gonna do is make smooth S-shaped curves in and out of the reef line to find where the fish are, find what depth they're at. We're setting out our second line. What we gotta do is we gotta turn into our first line, which is our long line, our planer trolling line. What this does is it'll kick my line out that way if I turn this way so that I can let out my second line without getting it tangled. Now, this line is gonna be our short line. We don't need to let this line out very long. We're gonna let it out about 100, 125 feet or so. All right, we're set up. All right, so we're up and rolling. Like I said, we've got our planer trolling line, the Penn International 30. That's got our planer on it. That's our long line, set out about 200, 225. And we got our top water line. That's the Pen 12H. That's our short line, out about a buck 25. We're gonna bob and weave in and out of the uh, reefs lines, see if we can locate some where some fish are, and uh, hopefully get on the bite. Like I said, this is all reef fishing. Fundamental East Coast, South Florida fishing. If you haven't tried fishing this way, you're gonna probably wanna learn how to do it because it's a very effective way to get fish on board. You're fishing that water column, down low, up high. You gotta find where the fish are. They're not gonna come to you. Okay, so we're heading towards 170 feet. We're doing right around six knots. We're gonna pick up the speed a little bit because we're trolling again. The essence of trolling is making fish chase down your bait you are going after actively hunting fish. You want fish to strike on the impulse to feed. All right, so what we're doing now is we're out in around 185. We're gonna curve back in, go into about 120 or so, see if we can uh, find that bite. Okay, so another key factor to consider when you're trolling the reef is, you don't wanna troll in a straight line. You wanna bob and curve and weave in and out of the ledges. This is what bait fish do to avoid being attacked by predators. It looks more natural to a predator if you were following the cyclical in and out pattern that bait fish follows. All right, we got a fish on. Fish on, we're tight. There you go, Abby, come on, pick up the reel, let's go. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reel in the short line. Abby can reel in the, uh, Planer, you got a fish, slow down, slow down. Don't race me. I'm trying to get my line in first. There you go, big guy. All right. All right, we got Abby. He's up to his planer. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, set the, set the rod down. Hand lining into the fish. One of my favorite parts of planer trolling is 
this. This is old school planer trolling. Hand lining it in. Uh, there we go. Oh, I see him on up on top. Uh. Mad. Coming in a little easy, so he's probably going to get agitated right at the boat. Let's see what's going on. Going to be a barracuda. Looks like we're going to be eating barracuda for dinner. Flip him in the boat. There we go, Barracuda in the boat. Dinner, woo! All right, there we go. Nice first fish. All right, there we go, nice first fish. Solid five, six pound Barracuda. Abby on the reel, having a good day, showing that reef trolling and what you can catch. Like I said, toothy predators, you're gonna wanna watch that wire, wire leader. All right, folks, so that was some good old-fashioned fishing fun. Got into the hookup with that nice barracuda. Going to be bringing him home to the dinner table. Showed you about trolling the reefs with that multi-layer setup, the South Florida fishing tactic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head in shallower, and we're going to troll some light gear, light spinners, 12 to 20-pound class, Penn Spin Fisher 5500, and we've got it rigged up with a three-quarter ounce white bucktail jig, one of my favorite lures. The zone that we're going to be fishing in is essentially the first reef in between 30 and 90 feet. So we're going to get right into this. We're going to head in shallower to about, oh, 70 feet and start troll. So we're riding around, coming up on 80 feet, starting to head over ledges of the first reef. So what we're going to do... show you is structure on your GPS versus what you're reading on your fish finder. On the GPS you can see defined structure. You might not be able to read it on your fish finder because you're underway or you're actually going over it which makes it look flat. As you pass over the ledges of it that is when you will see defined ledges, structure and uh, you know everything else that goes along with it. We're on, we're on, here we go. All right, oh, he's taking off too. All right, here you go, big guy, you ready? There we go. Abby on, on with the fish, tight. There we go, he took off too. All right, right around 60 feet of water. That's a nice hookup. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait. If he's, if he's running, you can't do it. Pull back, this is where you gotta pull back. Reel on the way down, pull back. Reel on the way down. Pull back and reel on the way down. There you go, big guy. That's how we do that. All right, he took a great run. We weren't even trolling for, you know, less than five minutes. Went over to those ledges that I was talking about. You saw it right there in about 60 feet or so. Keeping that boat in slow forward. Slow forward keeps your fish tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear my short line. So what we're doing right now is we're turning into the fish. Pull back and reel on the way down, big guy. There you go, pull back. Pull back, reel, there you go. That's how we gain line on a fish. All right. You having fun, fish slayer? Yes. All right, All right. stop reeling, pull back, there and reel you go. it yep. down. Pull back and reel on the way down. Don't ever let that line go slack. If he wants to run, you let him run. Get some leverage on him. He's cutting across over here. 
So I want them a little bit out to this side, so I'm gonna keep turning this way. There you go. Here we go, fish is about 20 feet away, 30 feet away. Here we go, big guy. Here he comes, get him up to the top. All right, Let's see what we got. Ooh, nice fall salvador, look at that. Oh, all right, step back this way. No, no, walk back. All right, reel up a little bit. Okay, happy second fish of the day. Nice, same about five, six pound false albacore. Over 60 feet of water. Like I said, we're having fun showing you how to troll the reef. This is the second tactic we're doing. Light tackle trolling over the shallows of the first reef. All right, we're gonna let him go. Gonna get right back at it. All right, so that was awesome. Nice false albacore. We're gonna get right back to it. The great thing about trolling with light spinning gear is, you know, you're up and rolling within a few moments. You pitch your lines out, you're halfway out there already. You let them out, you get set up and go. We're trolling these structures of the first reef in between 30 and 90 feet. Like I said, we're reef trolling. We're looking for structure, looking for these ledges, defined coral heads. So in essence, you know, reef trolling is some great family fun. You know, if you're not into sitting there anchoring up, chumming, and waiting for the bite from snappers, and you want bigger fish, get the kids on them, get some friends on them, you know, whatever it might be that'll stir up some excitement, you know, this is always a great way to do it. Pick it up, big guy, double header. Yes, double header. At the bottom of the ninth. Daddy and Abby on a double header, yes! There we go! Then get the better knot! Nothing better than capping off the day with a double header! I mean, literally, five minutes from pulling in the lines, calling it a day. Double header and 50 feet of water. Nothing better than a double header! See what we got? Oh, he's putting his shoulders into it. I feel him trying to, trying to put some resistance on me. Finally figured out that he's hooked. All right, there we go. I mean, false albacore. All right. False albacore in the boat with daddy. Woohoo! Nice fish. All right. All right, here comes the fish. You got him? All right, all right, all right. Take your time, take your time. You got him, big guy? All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Finesse. Remember, big guy, finesse. Bring him up to the back of the boat. You got him? Yes, I do. Yes, you did. All right, folks, what better way to end the day than with a double header? Nice false albacore. Couple, you know, four or five pounders. What an epic fishing adventure. We started out early doing the South Florida saltwater fishing tactic, covering that water column, planer trolling and topwater trolling. Got a nice hookup with the Barracuda. We're bringing him home for dinner. Then we headed in shallow, threw out the light gear with the bucktail jigs. Had several hits with the false albacore. Like I said, if you're looking for some good old fashioned family fun, head out and troll the reef. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about trolling the South Florida reef ledges and what different tactics you can use to ensure that you get into the bite. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.